The American Heart Association cares about the airway health of your children. In 2021, they put out a 20-page scientific statement about sleep-disordered breathing and cardiovascular disease in children and adolescents. Don't judge me for looking at my notes. This is a lot to unpack. This statement by the AHA emphasizes that obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA, is a known risk factor for heart disease in adults, but that it deserves more attention in kids. OSA disrupts sleep, negatively impacting emotional, metabolic, immunologic, and cardiovascular health. Alarmingly, up to 90% of children go undiagnosed for OSA. This is more than the 80 to 90% of adults who also go undiagnosed. OSA in children peaks between the ages of two and eight, and it's often linked to enlarged tonsils and adenoids. Now I'll put a link in the comments of a review Dr. Adams just did on a research paper. Long story short, this study found that if you expand a child's mouth, their tonsils and adenoids in the expansion group of kids in this study decreased by 50 to 70%. So let's put that together. OSA peaks between the ages of two and eight, and it's often linked to enlarged tonsils and adenoids. And we have research showing that when we expand children's mouths, we can decrease the size of adenoids and tonsils by 50 to 70%. The AHA in this statement points out that airway issues in kids can be spotted during clinical exams. Call out here to dentists, orthodontists, pediatricians. Your role is crucial in diagnosing and protecting airway development to prevent long-term health risks in our children. Risk factors identified by the AHA include airway size, cranial facial structure shape and size, soft tissue structures in the airway, narrow or retro positioned jaws, enlarged tonsils and adenoids, and upper airway muscle tone and strength. They also go as far as to point out the anatomic obstruction sites being the nose, palate, and throat. Now they say OSA symptoms in kids can be tricky to diagnose if we're not paying close attention. Symptoms may vary by age and they include snoring, labored breathing, or daytime sleepiness. I'll also throw in there mouth breathing and ADHD-like behavior. It is wild the improvements we have seen in children's behavior after doing expansion treatment. It's early detection matters. We need to prioritize our kids' sleep health because it is so correlated to their heart health and their overall health. Parents, at the first sign of any of these symptoms we note or any other breathing or sleep issues, please don't wait. Bring your child in right away. There's no such thing as too young. As soon as you notice an issue, that's when it's time to start addressing it.